I think there's something really lovely about adopting some limitations to digital work. And in this case, I wanted to emulate the printing process of Risograph, where you basically have to send one colour at a time. And if you want multiple colours, you either just have to use multiple passes, or you can be clever with the way that those colours mix together. And so I wanted to do that digitally in Photoshop and see if I can start to appreciate colour a little bit better and see how they play together and not just use full colour images at the start. So I stumbled across a fun little technique and it's using the black and white filter of all things. So let's jump in, have a hoot and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to start this effect by going down to the adjustment layers and selecting black and white filter. Now, amazingly, when you do this, it makes your work black and white, but it also gives you these sliders where we can adjust the value corresponding to the color of the image below. Now, this is really cool because when we start to think of this as a map of ink density, so black is 100% and white is 0%, then we get some really cool effects. So I'm going to create a solid color. I'm just going to go through and select one of these pre-prepared ones. I've got a nice little blue and just set that to screen. And now we're getting where our image was 100% black. It's now blue. I can go back into this and adjust the sliders. So I'm going to adjust these so the sky is really blue, but everything else is a bit blown out. And this is really cool, but it's just a one color. So I'm going to select them all, group them. I'm going to rename them because I'm a good little designer. And I'm also going to right click and go down to color and just color code this group just so I can keep track of it. I'm going to duplicate it. It's going to be my second color pass. So I'm going to go in there and select the other color. It's kind of peachy color. I'm just going to go and color code this group as well so I can just see in the layers panel which is which. Now I'm going to go in this black and white filter and kind of do the opposite effect. I'm going to completely blow out the sky by dragging the blues to the right and bring the red and yellow down to kind of get some of those skin tones back in play. And then I just select that group and go to multiply. And it's starting to happen, man. This is the kind of print look we're after. We've not got the texture in there yet, but the colors are really starting to play well together. We've got the blue and the peach, but together they're creating this kind of middle tone between them. And it's a really unique look and it's quite specific to print. So here's our peach pass and then we also have our blue pass and now I'd be amiss if I didn't mention that I stumbled across this whilst playing with Super Riso which is a set of layer styles that we've made to emulate Risograph printing and I want to show you exactly how I use Super Riso to create the same effect so I've just removed the color overlays and instead I want to select my groups and I want to pick a grain and ink color which is similar and then I'm gonna select my other group and pick. Now this one's pretty cool. And then I'm gonna actually go back into the black and white filler and I can adjust it. This is the beauty of having non-destructive effects. You can go and twiddle and adjust and create things. Cause like, look at this man. This color where they both mixed together is green. It's just such a beautiful way of working because you're creating new colors out of just two passes and you've got all of this control as to how you create these colors in your work. Now on this example, it's very similar to the last. I've just got a red pass and I've got a blue pass, uh, both using Super Riso with a couple of paper textures added on top because I'm a man obsessed. But I just want to show you in this one how you can add any element under the black and white filter, whether it be color or black and white, and it'll be affected by the same effect. So I've got a folder here and admittedly these are just white little uh, scribbles so it doesn't really have to be under the black and white filter but what I'm doing here is in some areas it looks white and in some areas it looks a little bit funny and pink and that's because I'm not actually drawing a white colour over the whole thing. I'm just making it not blue. I'm omitting the blue ink basically. And these are isolated elements, they're just their own layers. I can move them around, uh, rescale them, drag them about, you know, add more layers, do whatever I want. And it's just operating in this blue pass. You know, this is it, just white in the blue pass. But when the red layer is put back on, it kind of creates this pink look. And I can go in and 
if I inverted it, then it would do the opposite. It's basically saying, look, 100% blue here, please and thank you. And when it's white, it's just emitting it. So it's a really fun way of working because you start to rethink how color works and how things layer up. And if I wanted one of these elements to be in the red one, I'm just going to copy it up there. And now I've got the eye scribbles in both the red group and the blue. So it is looking white because it's basically saying no red, no blue, please. Thank you very much. Really lovely way of working. And it's not just limited to illustrations and uh, brushes and stuff. Here it is with a bit of live type. And this really shows off how nice it is where you get it white on the blue, but then just showing the red on the red. So look at this. When I'm moving this around, I'm getting pink text. I'm getting white text. I'm getting this kind of weird um, double exposure kind of look, something that you get in photography. But it's just such a lovely way of working because it, it just really takes you out of your comfort zone. And here's a text if I make it black. It does the opposite. It makes it, you know, 100% blue. So it's not visible on anything that is blue already, but it's uh, visible on some of the red and white areas. So it's just a really lovely way of playing with color. And again, it's completely editable, non-destructive. You're just working on the fly and having a hoot with it. Now in this example, I just want to show you how you can add more adjustment layers and just really push and pull the colors and just go nuts on it. So I've got a levels adjustment layer here and when I turn it off and on, it's doing some pretty heavy lifting. And what we do is if we turn off the uh, kind of orange color and turn off the super ISO color effects, we'll see that when I turn off the black and white filler, because the levels is crushing it so much, it's really oversaturating it. So when I play with the black and white filler, I've almost got more color to play with. So this is kind of like, a bit more heavy lifting when I when I move these sliders it's doing more work so when I put the effects back on we can go in there and just kind of tweak it however we want and it's allowed us to kind of extract this dark background out of the piece that wasn't really there before and it's just because we're crushing the original image and almost extracting extra colors that didn't really exist and honestly once you get playing around with this and moving sliders around here there and everywhere you know, you'll take these black and white images and you're not really worrying about the way that this black and white image looks because you know that you're going to remap it to a color. But you're just really pushing and pulling the image and creating something completely new and creating this lovely soft painterly effect, but keeping contrast in there. You know, having fun with color and thinking like a printmaker. And there you have it. There's a fun little way of kind of adding some of that physical limitation of a physical process to your digital work. And I think it's just really nice because it, it just shifts your head out of your mundane like routines and the way you do stuff. Because I'm a sucker for, I just do the same thing 4,000 times, you know. So adding a bit of limitation is a really nice way of stretching your head, learning how color works in this instant, and just reframing stuff. And you just add into the toolkit of how you do stuff, you know. A little guest appearance from a cold little chihuahua. Um, but yeah, have a hoot, take it easy. Bye.